discuss particularly like uh, the misconceptions and everything about the uh, police force? Yeah, there's a there seems to kind of be like this uh, this divide that we don't understand. Like we're not, it's not us versus them. It's not us, you know, the police versus everybody else. Like the like we're here to serve you guys. We're here to serve the community. We're here to serve the people of DC and people of Southeast. In my case, but there seems to be sort of this you know this divide that people have, right or wrong. You know, I'm not going to pretend like you know the police haven't been wrong in a lot of cases or you know they haven't been an instrument of pain for some people and that's necessary suffering i'm not going to pretend that it doesn't exist i'm not going to pretend that mpd is perfect okay we still have a lot to go but i think the seventh district and mpd as a whole does a whole lot better than a lot of other departments in terms of you know taking care of the community listening to the community being a part of the community you know that's another thing we have a a lot of officers who live and work we have a lot of officers who live and work in Southeast and who grew up in Southeast right. or grew up in D.C. So they have a personal stake in policing there and policing effectively. And, you know, sometimes being super aggressive, you know, getting getting guys for drugs, getting guys for guns, getting all this for that, it's not always the best solution. Uh, but lately we've had kind of a really high uptick, and I think everybody in the city has just seen this high uptick in violence. Right. And, just, and not just violence, but, you know, crime in general. We're just kind of at a loss of, no, we're not at a loss every time, but a lot of times we just don't understand it, so, why it's happening. So it's like nothing that y'all see that's like making uh, this this particular people or particular area go whichever way it's going? I mean, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of theories and root causes of it. There's, but you know, that's maybe far beyond anything. That's like PhD level understanding right, right, right. that I just don't have. Uh, but a big thing I see is that we have, you know, repeat offenders who, you know, they'll carjack somebody one day, get locked up the next day, and they're back out the street in one or two days. Okay. Like, how is that fair to the people at DC? Like, we have people out on pretrial release for murder. Is that due to both the, the COVID and the overpopulation of the jail? It's not so much overpopulation, but... And I don't want to, I'm not speaking from the perspective of the Metropolitan Police Department or am I providing the legal disclaimer advice? Disclaimer right yeah. now, disclaimer. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not speaking on behalf of 7th District, I was speaking on behalf of myself, but that's due to some policies that DC had. Now, I want to sp like stipulate that they did that because they thought it was fair and more just and more equitable. And sometimes it is. Is it really fair that somebody who's rich can bond out of jail and somebody who can't, can't, you know, can't bond out of jail for the same crime? You know, one guy gets locked up for D, like back home, you get locked up for DUI, you can bond out. But if you don't have the money, you're staying in jail. Right, right, right. Is that really fair? Maybe not. But is it really fair to the people when you have a violent offender who's back out in the streets? We're not talking, you know, small crimes. We're talking like murder, illegal possession of firearms, you know, harmful drug distribution. Like these are serious crimes that are really affecting community. Like really just bring people down and bring the area down.